This is the launch site for an intercontinental ballistic missile. When completed, it will be a self-contained nuclear age bastion, crammed with electronic equipment, propellant systems, crew quarters and power sources, all sheltered beneath tons of steel and concrete. These men are part of the most extensive and vital defense program in the free world, a program to build a battle line of combat-ready missile sites throughout the nation in a race against time, as fast as brain and brawn, ingenuity, and a sense of national self-preservation can accomplish the enormous task. A nuclear-tipped Atlas missile must soon be poised here and in other strategic locations to enforce the armed peace in today's world. Later, Titan and Minuteman must join the battle line on schedule. The nation's missile battle line is being prepared with a driving urgency usually associated with an army preparing frontline defensive entrenchments. Initially, several unprotected complexes were quickly constructed to provide a small force of operational missiles in the fastest possible time. These missiles present a screen of retaliatory capability behind which stronger complexes are being constructed. In the second missile line are the soft sites, some of which are now operational. Their missiles, launch equipment and crews, although above ground, are shielded behind concrete. The third line containing semi-hardened emplacements is stronger still, but requires more time to build. The missiles, equipment and crews are sheltered below ground level, covered by cement, steel and earth. The hardened complexes, called silos, are the toughest to construct. The entire weapon system is deep underground. In this type of construction, it is often more economical to excavate the entire complex and then proceed as if the work were at ground level. Upon completion of construction, the area will be backfilled to provide the desired degree of hardness. At this Titan site, the open-cut excavation is 40 feet deep. Construction required removal of 600,000 cubic yards of earth for each launcher complex. When completed, as depicted by this operational prototype, a launcher facility permits a missile to be serviced and fueled within its silo, then raised to the surface for firing. From the opening of the silo's concrete doors to the moment of launching, a missile is exposed for only a few minutes. Both Titan and Atlas missiles will use this type of launcher. A more advanced silo launcher system will permit Titan to fire directly from the hole. The first flight test of a Titan missile fired from the bottom of a 146 foot deep silo took place in May 1961, a major milestone in the ICBM development. Minuteman, the Air Force's new, comparatively low-cost, solid-propellant ICBM, has also demonstrated the feasibility of the fire-from-the-hole concept. In 1959 and 1960, a series of test firings with tethered missiles completely proved out the system. All of these missile launcher systems are currently under construction, but the task is staggering in scope and complexity. The rate of construction must be accelerated until we are completing two launcher silos a day in the later stages of Minuteman site activation. The job is big and complicated. The structure alone for one soft emplacement contains 129,000 tons of steel and concrete, nails and lumber. A control center has nearly 4,000 miles of electrical circuitry. Building the complexes is a new exacting science. It requires construction tradesmen to work to tolerances found in aircraft plants. Men who mastered their crafts on bridges and buildings must now build structures rugged enough to survive nuclear blasts, complex enough to service and launch giant missiles. But they must build these structures with the precision demanded of machinists. They must install miles of electrical wiring with the knowledge that one faulty circuit will knock a missile out of action as effectively as a bomb. They must assemble fuel storage tanks and loading lines with a hospital's concern for cleanliness, 
knowing that a speck of dirt can cause a damaging explosion if it comes in contact with liquid oxygen. And constantly emphasized in each of the thousands of construction and installation steps is the necessity for planning, coordination, and teamwork. A launcher must be delivered and installed on schedule so that it will be ready to receive the next section of equipment when it arrives. The part manufactured in Phoenix, Arizona must align perfectly in the field near Salina, Kansas with another part produced in San Diego, California. Any change in the design of one part must be incorporated in the design of its counterpart before the two meet at the missile site. Every launcher is separated by miles from the others in its squadron so that a single enemy bomb cannot knock out more than one site. And the total complex of this largest military construction program in history is spread across the nation in 16 states, from California and the state of Washington on the west coast to Plattsburgh Air Force Base in upstate New York. Closely coordinated with the construction and installation in the field is the nation's mightiest industrial team, mobilized to create and test the ballistic missiles and provide the means to launch them. Twenty-five major contractors employing more than 100,000 men and women, 400 subcontractors, more than 400,000 vendors and suppliers are working under the most extreme management pressures it is possible to exert to provide a gargantuan ballistic force on schedule. The key that ensures that each missile will be flight ready when needed is an intensive program of testing which continues throughout not only research and development, but also the production cycle, a program of testing which assures that every subsystem will perform to the rigid standards established by the Air Force. Each flight test is of monumental importance. Missiles are expensive, and only a relatively few are test flown. So every possible bit of performance data is obtained to confirm system worthiness and to be used as a basis for design improvement. Every part that goes into these missiles and launchers has a life and death significance more vital than any battle line in history. For never before have the destinies of so many hundreds of millions of people depended on the timely activation of a weapon.